I get a lot of worried emails about Ridgeback puppies and excessive biting. But before we talk about why biting can be bad, it's important to emphasize that biting is first and foremost an essential behavior. From the moment they're born, puppies are little piranhas. First, latching onto mom for milk, then latching onto literally anything within reach. Siblings, blankets, camera straps, you name it. Biting is how puppies explore the world. It's how they learn what and who is edible and how they learn about consequences. And it's behavior which is certainly not limited to puppies. Kids may have hands, but any parent will tell you that their approach to discovery is exactly the same. Bite stuff and see what happens. It's not a linear process either. Because who knows if the second time you gum at a dog will taste as bad as the first. Only one way to find out. And apparently that one way is to keep going until you vomit. Lovely. <laughs> so remember when you bring your puppy home, the expectation should be lots of biting. It's perfectly normal behavior. Your job is to make sure the boundaries and consequences are well established. Your puppy bites a toy, great. Give them lots of praise. Your puppy tries to take a bite of your sweatshirt or arm, you disengage and redirect. Providing praise only after their attention has shifted. Your puppy bites themselves or acts strangely. Yeah, that just kind of happens. No need to do anything about this other than watch and laugh while they have an existential crisis about the nature of reality. It's just something every puppy has to do. One of the most important reasons for not letting litters go home too early is that the puppies need to teach each other about bite inhibition and socialization. It's a trial and error education to discover how the world works. But once they're at your house, they don't get that feedback. So they're gonna rely on your help to show them the ropes. To that end, older dogs are an invaluable asset for showing your puppy the way of the world. Like here, Zero thought he could just snap at Penny to get his way. Not surprisingly, she kindly and quite forcefully relieved him of that delusion. Pretty important feedback. Or when Zero thought he could nip and annoy Doc to play like one of his litter mates, Doc offered a masterclass on ignoring the upstart until he gave up. This is why puppy socials are so important. Your dog needs to interact with all sorts of strange new puppies. At his first class, Zero discovered he did not enjoy getting bullied. And he also learned neither did any of the other dogs. This give and take in a controlled environment is essential for developing healthy bite inhibition from a young age. Even if you're a seasoned trainer with multiple dogs, enrolling in puppy class provides a critical educational experience you can't replicate anywhere else. But when you are back at home, I like to naturally incorporate bite training into our daily routine. With normal obedience, we ask our dogs to learn our language. But I find with bite inhibition, training is best done by speaking their language. Physical play with your pup on their level is not only a lot of fun, it's also more intuitive for their instincts. I find it's easier here to show your puppy the limits that you want to set up for all their play. For us, that means we can roughhouse and play tug of war, but the moment any teeth touch me, even accidentally, I let out a blood-curdling yelp. This stops the behavior immediately, then I completely disengage and ignore my puppy. If your dog is biting outside of a play setting, it's usually attention-seeking behavior, and yelling no or grabbing their muzzle is still giving them attention, which is why those tactics often fail. The yelp and ignore method works because it stops at the behavior while depriving them of attention. Your puppy will quickly begin to pick up that kisses get your attention 
and biting is better saved for starting play with other dogs. And this is a key point. Ridgebacks naturally prefer a much more aggressive play style with a lot more play biting than most people are used to. That's why you should expect to devote more time to bite training and inhibition than you would with another dog. Same goes for socialization. Across the board, these dogs need to learn how to moderate their play. Except when playing with another Ridgeback. Then it's just good old fashioned fun. To this day, especially during quarantine, I like to rile the dogs up with some wrestling. I love speaking their language of physicality. And we practice staying inside the boundaries I've set up. What those boundaries are will be different for you and your dog, but what's most important is that you stay consistent. Unclear rules are a recipe for trouble. As you can see here, Zero wants to bite and nibble as he does with Penny, but he's showing restraint so play can continue. He does a great job reading my body language, and in the end, he clearly knows when the game is done. It's never gonna be perfect. The more I rile my dogs up, the more likely they are to slip. Here you can see Zero put a bit of teeth to my elbow before shrinking back at the mistake. When something like that happens, or I can tell I've wound them up too much, we practice our pauses and resets. It's a great little training exercise all around to go from high energy to complete focus. But it's so fun that it doesn't really feel like much training at all. And it doesn't have to be wrestling. Anything you can do to reinforce your rules that biting gets these dogs nothing and positive engagement gets them everything, the better you'll be. It's not something you can force with a command. It's a common understanding that you have to foster. To that end, there are a couple other habits I find helpful with bite inhibition. First, only give your dog treats when they take them from you politely. If they snap or chomp, or even if their tooth touches your hand by accident, yelp and ignore. Especially with food on the line, a Ridgeback will pick up the game quickly. At later stages, push and pull the treat around to make the game a bit more challenging. Games of choice also help develop this restraint. First, only offer the treat when they stop trying to get it. Then, work your way up to only letting them have it when you give the affirmative command. These little games take just a few seconds to play, but I found them extremely helpful. Here, you can see Zero go from forceful insistence to patiently waiting. And I don't have to say or do anything. He makes the choice. I simply offer consistent consequences. Another great tool often overlooked is grooming. Many bites happen when your dog is uncomfortable with you touching their ears, mouth, or paws. Grooming really helps desensitize your dog to those stimuli, while also keeping them healthy and handsome. Speaking of teeth, after their first week's home, you can expect biting issues to pick up again during teething, when your pup can understandably be quite ornery. The rebellious adolescent phase is another one to watch out for. So bite inhibition shouldn't be something you think about as a single effort. It's something that you have to remain thoughtful about long term. In the end, Ridgebacks are gonna Ridgeback. From their first day home to their last. Their wild nature is part of their charm. Our job isn't to change that nature or to fight it, but to show our dogs how to harness and direct it so that we can make the most of our time together. The point of this video is to make those new to the breed aware of a Ridgeback puppy's general predisposition for mouthiness and to offer a few ideas I found helpful along the way. But as always, please remember, I'm just an idiot with an internet connection. If you're struggling with your dog's biting, please consult a professional trainer immediately. The earlier the intervention, the better. These wonderful dogs are more than a handful, and there's no better way to show our love than asking for help. And 
asking for kisses, of course. Lots of kisses are great, too. <laughs> 